casting a SkinFlex medical model arm with resin bones. Now this tutorial is a follow-up to two other tutorials I've done here on the YouTubes. And in the first part, I made a silicone, seamless silicone mold of an arm. And at the base, I sculpted some little keys in a little triangle pattern there. Released that with some Zip 301, of course. And then I poured that as a seamless mold. And the reason I, of course, did the seamless mold is because I absolutely hate seams. So anytime I can avoid them, I do. So then I poured that with a very soft, stretchy silicone that is TC5110F. And that's a, a also a fairly fast setting silicone. It has about a seven to eight minute working time and a one hour demold. And once I made that mold, and of course you can check out the full process in that tutorial, I will link that on the end screen. Then I made some resin bones to go inside. And that's the second part. The second follow-up tutorial shows how I made this uh, bone insert where I sculpted this little bone armature to go inside that seamless mold. So here I am checking that out, making sure that fits down inside without touching the sides and kind of hangs from those little key shapes that I made in the original mold. And then I molded that core. Once I sculpted that and got it exactly the way I wanted it so it could incorporate that surgical tubing vein, then I made a mold of that using TC5130F. That's the fast setting, a little bit firmer silicone. That one's a 25 shore A. And then I demold that. So now I have a mold of an arm and I have a mold of this bone insert to go inside the arm. So now we are ready for casting our arm. And one of the things I discovered in playing around with the new SkinFlex was SkinFlex without any pigment actually has really good clarity. So I thought that would be a fun little thing to play with of making this uh, medical model that you could actually see the bones inside. And I covered a lot of information in those first two videos, so definitely check those out because a lot of what you're seeing in this video will make a lot more sense when you see the first two. Now, first off, before casting, let's go over the SkinFlex 5 physical properties. This is a one-to-one -one mix ratio polyurethane rubber that mixes one-to-one -one by weight. It cures to a soft 5 shore A, about like average human skin, has about a 9 to 10 minute working time, a 5 to 6 hour demold time, and it can be colored with the 6900 pigments. And that's an important detail because this is phthalate free. And if you want to maintain the ROHS and reach compliance, you definitely want to make sure you're pigmenting this with the 6900 pigments. And of course, we can soften this with the SC5. That makes it softer and stretchier. And we can paint the end result with the SC94. And of course, as I mentioned, this is of course phthalate free, ROHS and reach compliant. Now, one of the important considerations when we're going to be embedding a resin piece or any kind of insert inside of another material is we need to be conscious of the specific gravity of both materials. Now, in this case, it worked out to my favor. The only main consideration I had to make was for that surgical tubing, which will have some air inside it. But the reason we want to think about that is if we have a material that has a lower uh, density than the material it's being embedded in, that means that material will want to to float. So for instance, if we have low density oil and water, the low density oil will rise to the top. So you want to be conscious of that and pay attention to the physical properties of your material. So in this case, we have the SkinFlex 5, which has a density basically about the same as water. So SkinFlex 5, the specific gravity is 1, and the cubic inches per pound are 28. So when we have one, that's typically a very low specific gravity. Again, that's like water. And then TC802, the casting resin, that one has a specific gravity of 1.06. And the higher that specific gravity, the more dense the material. So 802 has 26.5 cubic inches per pound. So we're pretty safe there that the 802 is not going to try to float, but just to be safe, I'm going to be adding some little lead fishing weights to that. And I'm doing this for two reasons. One is I just want to increase the density of that bone and uh, make sure that hangs properly in the right place inside the mold. So the more weight, the better but also to offset the air bubble that will be inside that little piece of rubber surgical tubing because that little air bubble can displace some of that mass and cause that bone structure to try to float. So just to be safe, we're going to be adding those lead weights 
as I'm pouring the resin. So again, TC802, this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume resin system. And this is a very fast, low viscosity resin. So ideal for these kind of quick pours like this. And what I'm doing is filling this mold about halfway. And then I specifically chose these lead weights uh, because they would fit inside those bones with still room for the resin to flow around them. So here I'm just dropping those lead weights down into those wrist bones and up goes the density. So now we don't have to worry about the uh, resin bone structure trying to float. But I show this because it's real important to consider that when you're picking out materials for the inside of a piece like this. So you don't wind up with a part that tries to float or move around because of that difference in the densities of the two materials. So now here is our resin bone structure, ready to demold that part. And there were some places where the uh, lead weights we're showing a little bit through the, uh, the, the resin. So I just took some white paint and painted over those areas. And now we are ready for casting. So here I threaded the surgical tubing through and just checking the fit on that in the mold. And once everything is in place, we are now ready to pour our SkinFlex rubber. And that was one of the neat things I discovered with the SkinFlex playing around with it was that it actually had much higher clarity than I expected because typically some of the translucent uh, silicones that I use, sometimes those are more of a cloudy, milky white. Now, one more thing really important with SkinFlex 5. I was doing this all in the wintertime. It is December here in the fine state of Texas. And when SkinFlex 5, when the part A gets cold, if it gets really cold, and it did when it was shipped here, it will solidify, but that is okay. I talked to the good people at BJB and they explained to me that this wasn't uh, like moisture contamination or anything. This is just a reaction to the cold. So you can reconstitute that part A by adding mild heat, so around 100 degrees. So I put that by a space heater and warmed that part A right up and it was good to go. But real important to know if you are working in a cold environment, you wanna make sure that especially once you reconstitute that part A, that you keep that in a warm area. Now, again, SkinFlex 5, this mixes one to one by weight. So here, I'm not going to be adding any pigments, so this is pretty straightforward. I think this was about 450 grams of part B, and then I'm adding my part A. And because I want that clarity, typically this has a low enough viscosity. There's a lot of applications where there's no need to vacuum degas, but because I did want to make sure you could see those bones through the wrist, I went ahead and mixed this up and did subject this to a vacuum. And I would just like to point out here before anyone comments on this, that uh, this is my interpretation of what is inside my daughter's arm. I don't know if that's the exact shape of her wrist bones or if that's the exact placement of veins inside. But the main thing I wanted to do here for those of you doing uh, medical simulators or special effects applications where you're embedding bones or veins or blood tubing, whatever the case may be, um, this this is a good starting point for you just to get a good visual on how you would make a core like this that would fit inside. So here I'm subjecting that to a vacuum and I'm just looking for the same thing I do with a silicone. I'm watching for that material to rise and then collapse and I'll let it kind of undulate in there for about 30-45 seconds and then I'm ready to uh, bleed off that vacuum and now we are ready to pour our skin flex. And again, this is a soft silicone mold. We don't have to use release here, but if I did use release for this, I would use typically the E302. If I'm going to be painting the part later on with some of the SC94 or something like that, typically I would use a light spray of the E302 mold release to prevent this from sticking. But again, this is a brand new mold. This is typically not an issue, but for the mold life, it's a good idea to use a light spray of mold release just so you get the maximum lifespan out of your mold. Now, as you can see, one of my children has joined me in this endeavor to help me demold this arm. And this was surprisingly easy to demold. I was kind of worried about those bones uh, causing this to be harder to demold around the wrist area, but actually popped out pretty well. Now, one last little bit of cleanup detail. Once I pulled this out, I designed this so those little tabs, those little keys could be cut off with a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel after I cast this. So uh, we now clean those up. I sanded those down and now I have a nice 
clean arm. I'm ready to wash that off, any dust from that grinding. And now I have a nice medical model of an arm. And again, I mainly put this out there not to say that, gee, that's exactly what's inside my daughter's arm, but mainly to give you an idea of ways you can embed material, especially things like bone and surgical tubing in SkinFlex for applications like this. Now stay tuned, I'll be posting some more projects using SkinFlex 5 and of course the softening agent. Next video I'll be featuring the SC5 using that to soften the SkinFlex 5. So as usual, I'll be linking all of the materials in the video description, so be sure to check those out. All of that's available at bjbmaterials.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, comment for the algorithm, and of course check the end screen for the links to the previous tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.